Okay, so let's get back to this. The expected resting metabolic rate drop would be a normal slowdown due to overall tissue loss, right? They're losing some muscle, they're losing some fat mass, their body should slow down their resting metabolic rate. Their actual resting metabolic rate, what you can is what you can measure. And metabolic adaptation is when the actual is more than what is expected. And in this case, terzepatide just gave them the actual amount. Let's get back to the summary here. The expected resting metabolic rate drop when people lose weight is due to normal tissue loss. Like you lose a, an amount of tissue, lean mass, fat mass, you're always going to lose some muscle. That's lean mass. That's part of lean mass, I should say. You get an expected resting metabolic rate drop. The actual resting metabolic rate drop that happens with caloric restriction, unfortunately, that you can measure, it's what you measure, is usually always more than the expected. So in this case, the trisepatide protected them and it just gave them the expected. There was not the fall off cliff. There was not a pronounced extra amount of resting metabolic rate drop. I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to explain physiology here. So <laughs> it's metabolically protective. Um, no unnecessary metabolic slowdown. The trisepatide users didn't experience the bonus drop in their resting metabolic rate that sabotages most dieters. Resting metabolic rate dropped only as expected not extra. Based on fat and muscle loss, the bodies behaved predictably, not defensively. They didn't go into starvation mode. That's a win. Muscle mass, fat-free mass was reasonably preserved. How's this for you? About 75 to 80% of their weight loss was fat, which is better than diet-induced losses. Most diet-induced losses are anywhere between 25 and 40%. And I know we hear the stories. Everybody loves to lean on that 40% because of one study that happened years ago. Oh, they lost 40% of their lean mass. Only a portion of lean mass loss is muscle, FYI. And some of it's the fatty infiltrate inside the muscle that they're not even accounting for. But some of these big name health influencers and doctors really love to lean on that 40%. But when you get into the studies where they had people exercising or they had people take care to pay attention to their protein macros or even just gave them high doses of trisepatide and let them go like it looked like they did in this one, they actually had a significantly lower lean mass loss than we've seen in some of those other studies. So don't let people scare you on the internet. It's, it's just, it's bullshit. <laughs> they are trying to scare you for some other reason. If someone's really trying to scare you about GLP ones, like first off, why do you care what anyone else is taking? It's so bewildering to me. And second off, they're trying to sell you their services or their supplements. Always just always go a layer deeper. They're always either selling services or supplements to you. So anyway, their fat oxidation increased. Their bodies became better at using fat for fuel. So they had a higher fat burn. That's a win. That's a metabolic win that tells me that trisepatite is actually improving the metabolic terrain. And their appetite decreased without rebound. No compensatory spike in hunger hormones like ghrelin. So I'm going to go with win here. It's protective. It's metabolic protection. It's not boosting metabolism like a stimulant or thyroid hormone. It's regulating the system so the body doesn't go into starvation mode. And we don't have metabolic adaptation go rogue. Terzepatide allows for weight loss without metabolic panic, if you will. That's what makes it powerful. It's very different from their just eating less calories that we're hearing on some of these reels on Instagram. So I just wanted to share that. <laughs>